Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today we're gonna make custom bifold doors. If you remember, not too long ago, we made a really big closet in my boys' room and I didn't put doors on that closet. That's because the kits that you can buy to add closet doors only come in a few styles and they only come in a few sizes. The opening for this closet was kind of uniquely sized, so I decided to make some custom doors. This will help us get the look that we want and we can add some special features to make them even cooler. So we got this kit for bifold doors and it comes with a track and all the hardware you need. And it's assuming that you're gonna buy the doors, cut them down to size, we're gonna make them instead. So really everything here is good to go except for this track, we just need to cut it down to fit the opening. To make these door frames, you could use pretty much any wood, but I had some leftover pre-primed MDF. This is from when I made the closet. I used it for the door jams. I went ahead and cut it down into several strips that were an inch and a half wide. To make these doors, we're gonna put two of these pieces back to back and glue them into the frame. That would make one and a half inches here. But the kit that we got is expecting doors between one and one three eighths. Another problem we have is that these are pre-primed and gluing these together wouldn't work very well. So we're gonna solve both of those things at the same time, run these through the table saw to rip them down to the right thickness, and that will expose the wood so we can get a nice glue up. You could also do this exact same thing on a planer if you wanted to. Next I needed to cut all these pieces down to the right length. And of course, you could set up a stop block, you could do them one at a time, but I decided to try clamping them all together and cutting them at once. This actually worked out really, really well because the pieces were all very straight. I marked the length that I wanted and drew the line across all of the pieces and then cut that line. To cut down the smaller pieces, I did the same thing, but it was a lot easier to line up the ends so I didn't have to use the clamp. We've got eight pieces of each one of these cut and there's four different lengths. That's because each door is made of two frames and the frames are gonna lay over each other and overlap in a different direction. I'll show you that in just a second. When we glue all that together, it should keep it strong and help it to stay straight over time. On this bottom frame, I've got the center piece here flipped over so you can see the difference. On the top frame, this piece is longer so that it overlaps here. It basically makes a half lap joint. Then these side pieces actually fit down in here. So now we just gotta glue all that up. I realized that it was gonna take a whole lot of clamps to get all four of these doors glued up at the same time, so I decided to use brad nails to hold this all together while the glue dried. And after those were all glued together, I put a rabbiting bit in my trim router so I could cut a rabbit all along the backside of each one of these doors to accept the inset panel. And I used the actual material to set the depth of that bit. This video is sponsored by Casper. They're one of my longest running sponsors because I really love Casper mattresses. Our entire family sleeps on them, we're really happy with them, and they're super comfortable. Casper has three different models now, the Casper, the Essential, and the Wave. We've got the Casper, and we absolutely love it. They'll send it to your house in a box. You can unpack it, sleep on it for 100 nights, and if you don't like it for any reason, they will come get it, take it away, and give you your money back, no questions asked. But they don't just sell mattresses, they actually sell a bunch of other bedding materials that you should definitely check out. And if you wanna check those out, you can get $50 towards select mattresses by going to casper.com slash ILTMS and use the code ILTMS. Again, I love Casper mattresses and I highly recommend them. Thanks, Casper. After I was done with the router, I had rabbits on the back of each panel, but the corners of those rabbits are round. So I used a hammer and a chisel to square off those corners. And to be honest, I have a ton to learn about using chisels properly, but in this case, it's on the back of the door, you're not gonna see it, and it just has to be square to accept the panel. 
After those were done, I used an orbital sander to clean up all the surfaces, remove any glue squeeze out to get it ready to paint. The frames are all painted and ready to go, so now we're gonna put them together to make the bifold doors. To do that, we got a really simple DIY set of instructions and hardware, and if you follow the instructions, this should be pretty easy to do. It comes with these little hinges that you don't have to mortise, so you can just set them right on here and screw them in place. That's really handy. To drill these holes, I'm gonna use this, this is like a self-centering drill bit has a little spring thing on it. So when you put it in, it centers itself within the hole. It makes it perfectly within the hinge. These kits are really easy to put together. All of the instructions are simple and straightforward. They give you all the measurements and every piece of hardware you need to put these together. Each one of the doors has three points that it's connected to the frame by. There's two at the top that are spring-loaded, so you have to drill a hole and then knock in these spring-loaded pieces into that. One of them has a wheel to help it to move freely in the track, and the other one gets fixed in the corner. On the bottom, there's a sleeve that gets knocked into place and a little foot that can screw in and out to adjust the height. And that's all the hardware that goes on the doors themselves. Next up, it was time to cut down the panels. I used some whiteboard material for this, but you could use really anything. I wanted something thin that would be lightweight and something we could easily see and see. Of course, you don't have to see and see, but I had a cool idea for putting in a design that would take advantage of the fact that this material has a thin coat of white on the top. Once I got the pieces cut down to fit in the frames, we moved to the CNC to cut in the design. Josh worked up a geometric repeating pattern that we could put on each one of the panels and it would look as if it carried across all four of them. We did several test cuts here, also trying different ways to hold down the material. We also ended up putting a little ledger on the left and the top, so we had a jig to put all the pieces in so that they all got cut exactly the same. Now I haven't gotten around to fully flattening the bed yet, so there were some high spots and low spots when we cut these. But the solution was pretty simple. We just turned the pieces 90 degrees and they cut really well that way. And after we had that process down, we cut all four panels the same way. I wanted to make sure that these panels were removable so we could swap them out in the future. And to put these in, I got some glazer points. These are just little metal points that get knocked in on the backside into the frame. And they do actually make a tool that puts these in even faster, but using a flat edge like a screwdriver or a scraper and a hammer works really well. The backs of these panels are still brown, and that's not because I'm lazy, it's because they have spray adhesive on them from the CNC. That adhesive has not set up yet, so it's still a little sticky. So I'm gonna move on with the project, and after that dries, I'll take them down and paint the backs white. The panels are in, the hardware's in, so the doors are done. So now it's time to hang them up, and to do that, we have to cut down the track to make it fit within the opening. So I measured the closet, I'm gonna cut down this track, which is aluminum, on the miter saw. The location of the track is really up to you. It doesn't matter if it's all the way in the front or all the way in the back. I went a little bit forward of center just so that the gap on the front side of the doors wasn't too big. After screwing that in, I also screwed in the feet that go in the bottom. These go down into the plate and into the side of the door jamb. And the important thing is that the center of the track and the center of those two feet are all in line. So I just measured all of that from the front edge. After that, the doors just kind of pop in place. It's really easy. The foot at the bottom sits into a little groove, and the piece at the top goes into a metal bracket that has a screw that you can change for adjustment. You will need to slide that around to get your door into the right position, and then tighten that screw back. 
I got both the doors installed and they're really easy to put in place. The only thing I haven't quite dialed in is getting them adjusted so that the gap in between them and the gap along the sides is all the same. It's kind of weird because each door has three points of connection so you can adjust in different ways. I just got to spend a little bit more time to make sure that everything is even. But check it out, I made custom bifold doors. I'm super happy with how these things turned out and the cool thing about this is they are cheaper to make than they are to buy and they can be completely custom. You don't have to do a design here, you can do solid panels to make them look really classy, cover it in whiteboard or chalkboard, put a graphic on it, print out a large picture, make it magnetic. There's so many different things that you can do for these panels and you can swap them out easily anytime you want to. I hope you found this video useful, and if you did, please let me know down in the comments. If you like this type of video, I've got tons of other projects of all different types that you should definitely check out. And if you're not subscribed, you definitely should by clicking right there, then go down and hit the bell so you get notified as soon as I post. That's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Now it's time to put together the frames and make bifold. Bifold? Bifold? The bifold doors. The frames are all painted, so now it's time to stick them together to, 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 to come on, man. Take four.